So the session begins with the party in the graveyard waiting for something to happen. Night has descended, blue moonlight shines down, mist has swathed through into the graveyard, and as they wait, they hear the sound of scratching, a rumble as dirt from one of the nearby tombs collapses in, creating a hole. Firth rushes out and heads into the graveyard, the others climb down from the tree. Nothing has been in there other than this rumble, so they don't know what has caused it. They have a look and they think and discuss. Firth comes up with the idea that what if it's not been grave robbers coming into the graveyard and digging up, but actually something from underneath has pulled what was ever in the grave down and that's caused this sinkhole. And with that, they decide to uh, go investigate in the crypt. At this point, only Blank and Rory and Junior, the dog, go down into the crypt, while the others stand around in the grave, keeping an eye out in case anything else comes. They get Bros to use her shovel to start digging up the grave. This, however, will take a good while, so they have quite a few turns in between this. Blank goes down into the crypt and he looks east and west, and he finds himself uh, the same uh, opening with the statue in front of him. There's a door to the west and uh, it has a handle for pulling there, but he decides to wait and listen. Both him and Rory hear nothing and then Blank kicks the door open, not wanting to pull the handle, uh, wanting to maybe get a surprise. And as he does, he sees a room with pairs of pillars holding it um, up and very magnificent tombs, big stone tombs, um, lining the sides of the walls. This is an honoured grave. But in the middle of the room, uh, surrounded by this cold mist, is a figure dressed in uh, tattered monkly robes. And as Blank sort of kicks the door open, making a noise, it turns around and he sees a skeletal monk with black eyes with pinpoint pupils that are glowing red and as it sees him it reaches its arm out and it shouts leave this place blank doesn't know what to do um he starts to draw his bow but before he can do anything mist swarms around him and he finds himself in a brief moment of darkness a uh, feeling of his stomach raising um, as if he's um, in a sudden drop or like on a roller coaster and then a thunk as he finds himself in a dark tight room his torch is no longer lit he, and you can see however in front of him uh, a wooden door so he pauses and waits um, he actually thinks he might be in a coffin that stood up um, his dog and Rory are both with him however they're all cramped in this tight room so he pushes the door open and he finds himself in the church's pantry. Um, it seems like this mist had teleported him from within the crypt into the church. So he has a back and forth with a monk. Uh, and he asks the monk to make him a grilled cheese sandwich, which the monk does. And uh, he, yeah, he basically says that there's some kind of spirit that's down in the graves uh, in the crypt below. Meanwhile, um, the rest of the party are still just digging up. Uh, this grave. Well, they're actually all sitting around and letting bros do it. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I think Yord and um, Frank were just like picking grass out of the ground and would, they were literally sat down um, while Firth was uh, thinking on what, um, what this creature could be that has pulled something from the earth. When um, Blank gets back, he tells the party what happened and Firth decides to go along with him, but Yord and Frank stay with bros. Um, so the and uh, Junior is also ordered to stay with Brawls as well. And so the same sort of thing happens. They go down into the uh, crypt and he points at the door telling him that there is um, this thing inside and um, before he can even go to open it, uh, he knocks on it first to try and attract some attention and the door swings open as this um, undead monk uh, rushes out and um, goes to claw at uh, blank. Firth in this moment casts his entanglement spell and so vines wrap around uh, the monk and so he can't move but after a few moments uh, the mist comes in again and teleports them up in the graveyard uh, the party who's been um, waiting around for bros suddenly feel a cold chill in the air and they hear the sounds of scratching as bursting from the earth from all these different graves are skeletons. They're surrounded by a group of five. 
They sprint to try and get out of the graveyard. And as they are running, though, um, the skeletons catch up with the dog, who isn't able to escape quick enough. And um, the skeletons, yeah, begin scratching at the dog. So the party turns around. Rather than running into the church where it's safe, they decide to risk their lives for Junior. And so they're firing arrows and Bros rushes in, um, swinging her sword. And as this happens, suddenly, poof, Blank, Rory and Firth are in the graveyard with them, fighting in this swarm of mist that has appeared for a brief moment and then dissipates. And they manage to kill all the skeletons, and the rest of the party goes down into the crypt, having um, been told about this strange monk. He's still covered in vines. The rest of the party attacks at him, firing arrows, many of them sort of missing. Um, the arrows going through his partially incorporeal form. Frank... Uh, tries to negotiate and asks what the monk is doing here and it simply replies Leave the dead to rest Leave this place And so they decide to kill him and then rob his, um, him of all his treasure not heeding the words of the monk at all They deduce that it's some kind of guardian spirit maybe a past monk that once lived here um, and they think well, we're chaotic, we like money, this place looks rich, um, we're going to take it for all it's worth. So after firing arrows, uh, the monk being defenceless, not being able to scratch at anyone, um, a volley is, uh, kills him, and they go inside this tomb in which they uh, begin to raid, pulling up, uh, checking inside urns and things like that, where they gain a lot of gold. At the same time, um, Firth, he notices a, um, uh, a break in some of the walls. About an inch or so, there's a gap where the stonework looks um, inset by an inch. Uh, and so he pushes it forward and it reveals a hidden tomb in which there is a sarcophagus of a, um, a sort of priestly looking man, um, slightly, uh, well, bearded, much like Firth, he holds a large staff which has vines that wrap around it and he seems to have um, birds on his shoulders. Firth knows this figure to be Asher Farlight who was uh, once a druid um, of an old order who preached um, the sort of adoration of nature. He pops open the grave and inside he finds not only some gold, the few remnants of um, the, the corpse that was once in here many centuries ago, but there is also a leather pouch, a scroll pouch, um, and he pops it open and has a look inside, and there is a scroll that contains a list of druid spells uh, from 1 to 4th level, uh, or 5th level actually, um, so there's quite a few useful spells there for him to use now. A little bit of treasure to expand his spell list. They leave this room, they rest up for, a, or they firstly left, rest up for a moment, and they press on. They find uh, a chest with some treasure inside it, and they also find a tunnel which leads them to the Ghoul's Warren. They go through this tunnel, and um, actually some, there's some save rolls being made. They, a few of them slip, and they fall down, um, finding themselves in this warren. It is a large uh, cave that has been dug out by the crude claws of these ghouls. Uh, there's bits of stonework that still remains. Maybe this was an old part of a crypt or something like that. Uh, however, there is bones scattered everywhere and a few fresher corpses, but the flesh has all been torn away. They recognise one of them to be the gravekeeper. And so they uh, fight these ghouls, and it is a devastating fight. There's three ghouls in total, and they were sort of triangulated around. Spells were cast. The ring um, from uh, Frank was cast, but it didn't work on one of the ghouls. And everyone was um, attacked and slashed and bitten at. And uh, most of them, in fact, everyone apart from Blank was taken out in the fight. Uh, not killed, paralysed by the ghouls' um, claws. And um, the, the fight finished with Blank being 1v1 with a ghoul. The rest of them had been killed. There was one ghoul left. And as it turned and slashed at Yord, uh, it then spun around and snarled at Blank and began to charge at him, uh, leaping with its long claws ready to strike. Blank knocked an arrow, drew, fired, rolled a nat 20. 
straight through the skull of this creature, which he grabbed and then tore open, sort of Doom style, um, leaving the guts to go everywhere. Um, and then he like fell to his knees, out of breath, a little bit hurt from the rest of the fight, everyone around him paralysed in this sort of paralytic position. And he then waited for over an hour, um, resting in this area, keeping his eyes um, sort of peeled, listing out for anything else to be there. And during this time, he also checked around for treasure, in which he found a lot of gold uh, from various different um, corpses and taken from uh, who were like thieves and things like that. He also found um, two salves of restorative ointment. The party was awakened. They then uh, left the room, the crypt, went to the church, they spoke with the priestess and she thanked them for um, their hard work and risking their lives. She was able to tell them what the ointments do. These are apparently um, ointments that the church sometimes receives from a, a grand cathedral which is in the city of Brandmere. Uh, these ointments are used to uh, aid anyone with ailments. So she tells them the description, uh, giving them so it can cure wounds uh, for I believe a D4 plus eight. It can heal a disease and it can also heal a uh, poison. It has, there's two um, jars of this ointment and each jar has five dosages. Uh, so it's a good uh, substitute for healing potions for the time being, as in the fight against the ghouls, the party used up healing potions, healing themselves. Uh, Cure Light Wounds was a spell that was on the scroll that, um, that Firth had, and that was used to get rid of the ghoul uh, paralysis. And um, yeah, it was a brutal session. That that last fight really uh, tore into them. And if it wasn't for that nat 20, then we would have had a TPK on our hands. Uh, we sort of sat back at the end of the session uh, and I asked everyone, I was like, how do we find that session? Because there was a bit of like book uh, checking and stuff. We were looking up rules. Um, turn was something that we realized we'd been doing wrong in combat. We would have been regarding a turn as you go through each player uh, and that's the uh, and each once that's done that's a turn when it's actually a round uh, that was something that we'd seen before but then we were thinking oh well when it gets back round to this turn the entanglement spell should be done but actually obviously exploration rules says that it's a uh, a turn is 10 minutes so this entanglement lasts for 10 minutes which turned the tide of battle against that crypt thing. That was what the monk was. It was a crypt thing from AD&D that I then uh, sort of took the stats of and used for this uh, encounter. Um, a very, uh, well, a kind of powerful creature. Um, I loved rolling the dice on it. Uh, so it has a, basically the way it works is it cast a spell, the players have to save versus the spell. If they fail, then they are teleported to a random area. You roll some D100s to determine where. Um, one was up, that was how they ended up in the graveyard. The other one was, uh, I think it was like a thousand foot south, and so that's why I put him in the church out of the dungeon because it was just such a far distance. And so I asked the party, how did they find this uh, session, especially with checking back in the books and things? Blank's player said it did remind him a bit of being in the library. There was a lot of research because um, I noticed there was, um, a bit more sort of disconnect when we were checking the uh, books, so it was like me and Firth were checking the books, uh, making sure we've got like a rule right, and if a spell worked the way that it did, that sort of thing, uh, takes a couple of minutes, you know. But the party said, well, we're all new learning this system, and um, I asked them if they were all really enjoying it, because I thought, hey, we're nearly 10 sessions in, I might as well get some player feedback. And yeah, everyone said that they really enjoy the system, they're loving it so far, um, Firth, who's played 5e before, said that he actually prefers it. He likes how classes are the definition of like who you are. When you play a class, you are a druid, and that you're like truly a druid. And he loves like the later level flavor, or not flavor, I guess, the later level mechanics to the druid, in which the druid has to go and fight other druids or challenge them in some way. He loves that sort of stuff. Blank was telling me that it is challenging, definitely, but he really prefers that. He says it reminds him a bit of Dark Souls, 
and the weight of these fights actually um, you know, give meaning to going into combat. They, it is better for them not to go into combat and try and make a work around. And when they do find themselves in that situation, um, they know that it's life and death and it makes them do drastic um, moves. He said, for example, when he's played 5e before, uh, he can't really remember a time where like, they've had he's like maybe one tpk right or near tpk um he says for example oh that fight against the ghouls right he says when we uh when we fought them and we uh, ended up killing them right everyone's like uh, wounded and we need to just rest up now and find a safe place to be he says in 5e i would have probably maybe even left the party and sort of ran off um, instead of leaving them because, you know, they might have been able to survive it, they get up or whatever. Um, if we took out the ghouls, right, we can just, like, bounce back up again and uh, go at it, right? We would just, we'd be able to dominate because we can just rest for a short period of time and then we are um, suddenly just better, right? And I said, yeah, it's 5e has a bit more of a heroic flavour to the fantasy. Yeah, he prefers this grittier approach uh, to the fight. And while it is a bit of bookkeeping, especially for the uh, XP for gold stuff, um, everyone's enjoying it. Next session, they are going to go to Amberside Lodge and flip a house, basically, uh, see what's going on there. That is something I haven't actually prepped. I came up with it on the fly and I need to prep it. It's been two weeks since we had that originally introduced, so... Huh. I don't quite know what I should put in there. And after that, they're going to go and get their mushrooms for Demdike. They don't know how they're going to do this. I can't wait for them to see that interaction as it is... The dungeon itself isn't quite a fighty fighty thing. There's some tricks and traps in there and I'm looking forward to see how they uh, interact with that and encounter it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself and bye-bye um, for now. See you next week.